Well, hello there, it's Matsmus. Thanks for joining me, guys. I hope you're having a wonderful day today. We are talking about self propelled artillery systems once again, and the list of wheeled artillery systems out there is almost endless, it seems. Every time I look into them, there seems to be another one that just crops out of nowhere. Uh, but again, we will discuss the artillery because it is a trade that I will be going into soon. And uh, honestly, it's one of those kind of niches that I. I want to learn more about, for sure. I, I want to get into the artillery world, being a, a tank mechanic back in my day. Uh, I think it's rightly so I should learn a lot more about artillery systems around the world. And today we are discussing a French artillery system known as the Caesar, or César, as the French say it. So this vehicle has been built on a proven artillery system setup, such as the AMF-3 gun, the 155 GCT AUF-1 self-propelled gun, and the 155mm TRF-1 towed gun. Caesar is pretty much the common of both of these. As we all know, towed guns are quite disadvantaged in terms of maneuverability and survivability by their size and their design. The genuinely versatile Caesar is pretty much filling the gap with better wheeled vehicle capabilities and the ability to pretty much meet operation requirements very quickly uh, and being able to, you know, reduced costs, as we already know, similar to tracked vehicles, because tracked vehicles cost a lot of money to keep going. Caesar can support all types of motorized, mechanized, and armored units, including rapid deployment forces, like some of the rapid deployment brigades we're starting to see around the world now for NATO. Caesar offers an enhanced firepower through a quicker response, longer range, and improved accuracy setup, which is common through most wheeled artillery systems nowadays. It does cover a larger area with fewer guns and favours initiative, manoeuvring and quick reaction time while minimising risk of the crews firing the gun. So the development of this vehicle pretty much started with Gaia Industries, which in late 2006 became Nexta. It developed a 155mm self-propelled technology demonstrator called Caesar, otherwise known as, I'm going to try my best to say this, Camion Equipe d'un Système Atelier or Truck Mounted Artillery System. Basically, it's a, a very well-known truck that's been placed on with the chassis of a very well-known gun. Um, following trials of this system, a decision was taken by the company to build a pre-authorized production Caesar, and following company trials, this was evaluated by the French army in late 1998. In September 2000, the French delegation Générale pour Romand, or DGA, awarded the company a contract for the supply of a batch of around five 155mm 52 caliber Caesar 6x6 self-propelled artillery systems. Interestingly enough, you'll see different variants of this vehicle, even though they're technically the same kind of vehicle. The next assistance facility at Beaujau told that the cab was to be supplied by Soframe, previously LOHR, which has been installed on the modified Mercedes-Benz 6x6 truck chassis. By this time, the company had two Caesar-built systems. The first Caesar was essentially a technology demonstrator to prove that it was possible to mount a 155mm gun on a 6x6 Mercedes-Benz Unimog. This was then followed by a second model which was evaluated by the French army and in late 1999 went to Asia. The third Caesar incorporated all of the lessons learnt with the French and Malaysian trials and is essentially a pre-production vehicle. This is fitted with a revised, fully enclosed crew cab with improved air conditioning and upgraded computer software. This Caesar was the baseline for the French Army version, which has the Atlas computerized fire control system and a land navigation system, which is now fitted to the French Army AUF-1 upgraded self-propelled artillery system. The first Caesar systems were delivered to the French Army in late 2002, with final deliveries taking place in early 2003. They have been used by the French Army to form one complete artillery troop of four Caesars, with the fifth being used for training and reserve. In late 2002, the US Army Field Artillery School and Center hosted the approximate 200 people to observe the Caesar firepower demonstration at Fort Sill, Oklahoma. In all, 100% of the projectiles fired at the Fort Sill range were less than 50 meters from the target and 20% of them hit the target. At the firing position, the French crew fired six M107 projectiles in 57 seconds. Late in 2003, following a detailed analysis, the French army decided to purchase additional Caesar SPGs rather than continue with the major upgrade of the AUF-1 SPs to enhanced AUF-2 standards. In December 2004, the French DGA awarded the company a contract covering the supply of 72 Caesar 155mm 52 caliber self-propelled artillery systems for the French army. That is a lot of firepower, guys. The total value of that contract was around 300 million euros, which included ammunition, a five-year logistical support package, and an upgrade of some Caesar systems already delivered to the French army. 
Newer production Caesar systems will be based on the new Renault trucks Defense Sherpa chassis or the 6x6 which will be fitted with a fully armour protected cab and supplied by Renault Truck Defense. The first production verification Caesar system on the Sherpa chassis 6x6 was completed in mid 2006. Apart from the new chassis and cab this will have only minor differences when compared to the first Caesar systems. The muzzle velocity radar for example is now on the right hand side of the ordnance rather than above the ordnance. So let's talk about this vehicle a little bit more in depthly. So it should be noted that while all examples of the Caesar built to date have been based on a Mercedes-Benz 6x6 truck chassis, all production Caesar systems from France and Thailand are built on the new Renault Trucks Defense Sherpa 6x6 truck chassis. For use in high ambient temperatures, i.e. it's bloody hot, the cab is fitted with a very good air conditioning system. The fully enclosed crew compartment is at the front with the 155mm 52 caliber ordnance mounted to the rear. A central tyre pressure regulation system is fitted as standard that allows the driver to adjust the tyre pressure to suit the train being crossed. This is very standard guys, we see it in a lot of wheeled artillery systems to allow them to not only go across country but also to adjust the pressures for making a stable firing platform. As Caesar is mounted on a wheeled chassis, its overall life cycle costs are much lower than compared to tracked vehicles, and we already know this. This is of increasing importance as many users are now looking for a total life cycle cost reduced on these weapon systems rather than the initial procurement cost, i.e. I want to make sure that if I'm spending a lot of money on this, I get the best bang for the buck for the long haul. The new fully enclosed cab has been mounted at the front of the vehicle and has individual seats for a crew of five. The cab is welded steel arm and provides protection from small arms fire up to 7.62mm calibre and some shell splinters from indirect fire. The cab windows are 26mm thick and they have windscreen wipers. Mounted at the rear of the Caesar is the complete upper part of the 155mm gun which is the upgraded version of the TRF-1 towed artillery system. The gun is fitted with a double baffle muzzle brake and when travelling the ordnance is held in place by a positional clamp. This is located to the immediate rear of the cab which is operated by a remote control, allowing the crew not to have to get up there and unwinch the damn thing. When the system is deployed in the firing position, a large spade is hydraulically lowered at the rear to provide a more stable firing platform. Of course, if you're firing 155mm of shell, you're going to want to make sure you're not damaging the suspension on this thing and giving it a suitable place to fire. The rear four wheels are raised clear of the ground so that the large spade absorbs all the firing stresses. Caesar can come into action in less than one minute and come out of action in a similar time period. According to the company, in less than two minutes this system can fire six full projectiles, come out of the battery and start to move to another position. This means that it will be very difficult to engage Caesar with counter battery fire with the shoot and scoop manoeuvre. I've mentioned it on many of my videos before guys, it is the common premise when it comes to self propelled artillery. You need to fire and you need to get out of there as quickly as possible. There is so much technology out there now being able to track down these artillery batteries to engage them once they've fired. The main gun is fitted with a screw breech mechanism that opens upwards automatically with a revolving automatic primer feed mechanism holding 14 primers. It conforms to the latest NATO Joint Ballistic Memorandum of Understanding. Caesar is a self-sufficient self-propelled artillery system, basically meaning it's a lot more automated. There is no survey team required due to the installation of a Segem Sigma 30 onboard reference package position data system, which includes a global positioning system and is mounted on the actual gun itself. This allows the crew in the back of the vehicle to basically locate targets, get input from the battle group and put rounds down range without having to put too much manual data into the system. Now myself personally I am going into the artillery, I'm a little nervous with the whole fully automatic thing and fully automated thing. Um, I was talking actually to one of the gunners who was uh, going through some of my recruitment paperwork the other day and he was mentioning that he agrees, you know, I'd much rather have more manual input and relying on those bubble levels than, you know, telling a computer to do everything because, you know, sometimes computers have glitches and things can go very, very wrong. There is an RD-84 muzzle velocity radar mounted over the ordnance and this feeds the information to the onboard fire control computer which is located in the cab together with its own printer. Surprisingly, the computer on board this system also carries out a number of other functions including 3D display of friend or foe local situations. This allows to prevent blue on blue fire. There is also integral sensors on this system that allows it to carry out ammunition status management, gun status management and ammunition resupply management. Basically, this is a very self-sufficient system and they've gone very automated with this gun. 
There's also a temperature control device that advises the crew if the ordnance is becoming way too hot and if there's a danger of a cook-off. This is obviously going to be quite common across most systems nowadays, guys. With these guns being able to put so many rounds down range, there is risk that the crew are not paying attention to how hot that gun's going to get. In turn, this will pretty much affect your accuracy and potentially will have a cook-off in the barrel, turning the shell that should go down the tube into a grenade inside the tube, killing you and the majority of your crew. The maximum rate of fire on this gun is 6 rounds a minute according to Nexter at a burst rate of fire of 3 rounds in 18 seconds and is normally attained by a very competent crew. To reduce crew fatigue and increase the rate of fire an automatic projectile loader is mounted to the right hand side of the breech. The propelling charges which can be of conventional type or the more recent modular type charge are loaded manually. The main advantages of the Caesar are that it has similar firepower to existing towed and self-propelled artillery systems but with greater strategic mobility and quicker in and out action times. The last feature also increases its combat survivability, basically allowing counter battery fire to be non-existent for the fact that they will be out of there by the time the rounds get back to them. The standard 155mm TRF has a crew of 8 while Caesar only has a crew of 5 including the commander and driver which again is reducing the operational costs of this vehicle and risk of the crews. And the vehicle can be transported by air, for example the Lockheed Martin's Hercules C-130 and the Transal C-160. Caesar can also be carried by landing craft, surface ships and very easily by railway flat cars. Nexus Systems has also developed an ammunition resupply vehicle which carries containers of ammunition, projectiles and charges which can be rapidly unloaded using an onboard hydraulic crane. A total of 6 containers carry around 72 rounds and basically the conventional bag charges can be used as well for more recent modular charge types. Overall the max road speed of this beast is 85 km an hour, its max road range is 600 km and its max firing range is 42,000 meters. Now what I believe you're seeing right now is the 8x8 version of the Caesar vehicle. It's an upgraded version which allows for automatic loading and automatic ammunition storage and carry. This allows the gun to continue firing and prepare another round without another crew member having to go anywhere near the gun. Honestly in my own personal opinion it seems a little redundant and I don't like the way that this system operates. It seems way too complex coming from a mechanical standpoint there is far too much to go wrong here and I don't agree with a machine handling ammunition all the way through the firing process. I mean, that arm at any time, if fails, drops it onto a rock or whatever else, you can have a really bad day. Um, there's still a manual loading process, as you can see by the other gentleman on the left-hand side, so to me, it just seems like a very redundant system, something that can fail, and overall doesn't increase the capability of the gun that much. You're basically just moving one person from one area to another area. He's still having to put those shells onto the loading carry that is going to bring it over to the loading charge breach uh, push. So, honestly, it seems like a bit of a crazy system, but... Uh, that's just me, that's just my opinion on it. Overall guys, um, you know my opinion on, on wheeled vehicles if you've watched my channel before. I, I do have a lot of respect for them. I am still on board with the tracked vehicles world. Um, I love my AS90s, I love my PSH 2000s. Um, they're just guns that are on tracks and they're capable of going just about anywhere. Yes, they're slower, but the turrets on them allow them to traverse quickly. They don't have to set up blades. You know, they don't have to worry about this weird ammunition storage that they've got going on here and the different arms and legs moving everywhere. You're inside the turret, you've got boys inside there, four-man crew, bang, off it goes, bang, off it goes, continue, continue. This seems like a lot of mechanics that can go wrong and overall it's just going to be a bit of a nightmare if things do really go to pots. Uh, it's definitely a modern day weapon system that's coming up to par with, you know, some of the other wheeled vehicles out there. Everybody's going down this route. Uh, I just think that with the technology we have nowadays, I don't think this is good enough. I think we can do better than this. I really do think we can do better than this. Uh, six rounds in under one minute for something that's just about all the way fully automated seems like a, a cop-out. It doesn't seem like it's good enough to me. Uh, in that time period, in a minute, if it's a fully automated gun, I'd be looking at, you know, like 15 rounds a minute. You know, it just doesn't seem quick enough. And in the world of wheeled artillery and self-propelled guns, you've got to have something that can shoot very, very quickly because otherwise it's just a waste of time and money. You might as well just go back to your track vehicle that's a lot more armoured, a lot more capable of going just about anywhere. Um, that's just my opinion. But again, it always comes back to the key player in self-propelled artillery for me, and that's money. They want to make sure they're producing something that's very cost-effective, and honestly, I get it, but I don't agree with having to 
reduce everything down to wheels and reduce everything down to this automated process. You're taking the guys who know their job, have been artillerymen and gunners most of their military careers, off the guns and into holding a keypad and pressing buttons. Instead of manually breaching those shells, getting them in there quick, it's the same principle as for tank autoloaders. You know, we have this huge argument about what's quicker, what's better. And just my opinion in the artillery world, I honestly feel like we do not need self-propelled guns that have automatic loading systems. We're in an environment, for the most part, that you have a little bit of time to, to set up. Um, and if you do want to do the shoot and scoot maneuver, then build an automatic loading system that's very, very quick. And the ones I'm seeing on most wheeled vehicles nowadays don't seem quick enough. There's got to be a better procedure or mechanical principle that we can use than the ones that I'm seeing on some of these vehicles nowadays that are wheeled uh, in the 155mm gun range. So overall, guys, I, I, I like the vehicle, but it, again, it just reeks of the same old, same old. You know, I look at most of the self-propelled guns for the NATO world. They all come across as the same kind of method the same kind of technology where's the gun that can self-load you know five rounds and fire five rounds in like 10 seconds you know this is the kind of stuff i'm looking for in in the 21st century it's going to be 2018 soon and we're still loading guns pretty much at the same sort of rate as what a, a standard operating crew could manually and that that to me is just uh, i don't know just a little strange to me and i know a number of you are going to be like well yeah the crew will get tired blah 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 guess what guys Vehicles and machines get tired too. It's just not seen as well. Um, eventually, things will break, chain snap, gears break, um, you know, belts lose tension, blah, blah, blah. It will eventually fail. So don't give me the machines can do the job better thing. That's just my opinion on it. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I would love it if you could leave me a comment. Let me know what you think of this vehicle. Um, if you do want to support my channel, I would really appreciate it if you could go check out my Patreon page. It is in the description box below. And I hope you all have a wonderful artillery self-propelled filled day. All the best. Bye-bye.